Now, today we are going to discuss about the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. First we will develop the concept of rheumatic fever and then we will see what is the relationship between the rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease. Actually we have to develop three concepts. Number one, what is the relationship of special type of streptococci, the relationship with rheumatic fever and what is the relationship of rheumatic fever with the rheumatic heart disease. This is our task. Today our work is that we have to develop what is the conceptual relationship between streptococcal infection with the rheumatic fever and what is the relationship of rheumatic fever with the rheumatic heart disease. Let us take a simple example that there is a child here and what really happens that in this person right there is sore throat. Let us suppose there is a special type of bacteria which enters in the pharynx which attacks the pharyngeal mucosa or it may attack the tonsils right. This special type of bacteria which can uh, incite the rheumatic fever this is streptococcus and not every streptococcus a very special type of streptococcus let me tell you what is this bacteria. It is streptococcus so cocci, streptococcus, beta hemolyticus, which group? Beta hemolyticus, right, which produces a strong hemolysis because these streptococci produce strong hemolysins which produce the hemolysis of RBCs in blood agar. So, the streptococci are beta hemolyticus belonging to the lens field, lens field group A right there was a lady called Rebecca Lansfield which subclassified the beta hemolyticus streptococci according to the special type of cell wall carbohydrates right. So according to the cell wall carbohydrates of the streptococci Rebecca Lansfield classified the bacteria into Lansfield group A and B, C, D so and so forth. This particular bacteria which I am talking right now, this has to be streptococcus, it has to be beta hemolyticus, it must belong to blood group, uh, it must belong to Lansfield group A. A. With N, it has to be rheumo, rheumatogenic strain, rheumatogenic strain. There are some strain, there are some special strains of group A which can specially produce rheumatic fever. Now, let us suppose that this person develops this particular streptococcal infection in the sore throat from pharyngitis or tonsillitis. Then what really happens as you know that these bacteria will be attacked by the macrophages right and macrophages will take up the antigens of bacteria and present to the immune system. Let us suppose here is your immune headquarter. This is your immune headquarter. If this patient's immune headquarter means its immune system. Now naturally what really happens when bacteria will attack the mucosa, bacteria will start producing damaging there and that, that will result in inflammation of the pharynx and when inflammation of the pharynx is there naturally neutrophils and macrophages are coming there, right? Macrophage will take up the bacteria and present the antigens of macrophages to the immune system. Is that right? And what will be the result? That when bacteria antigens are presented to the immune system, immune system will respond by producing antibodies, producing antibodies and sensitized lymphocytes. Right? We say there will be immune response. Now, ideally speaking, what should happen? Ideally speaking, in response to the streptococcal infection, anti-streptococcal immune response should be generated and this response, this immune response should attack back to the bacteria. These antibodies should attack the bacteria and of course you know some of these antibodies will activate the complements and destroy the bacteria. Some of these antibodies, 
anti-streptococcal antibodies of course, they will act as option in and help in rapid elimination of bacteria by the phagocytic cells. This is, this is what ideally should happen that when a person suffer with streptococcal infection in the throat, right, immune system should be activated, immune response should be generated and this immune response should eventually eliminate the bacteria. Is that clear? But you know, as it happens in practical life, everything is not ideal. Same is here, that this type of situation that bacteria enters, immune system activated and response is back, this type of situation is true in 97% of cases. This is true in 97% of cases. In about 3% of the patient, there is a sad story. Within 2 to 3% of the patient, something sad happens. What happens? Listen carefully now. If there are 100 people with this type of infection, 97 to 98% are lucky. Why? Because when immune system gives a response, this response is so specific that it fires back on the bacteria and destroy them. But unfortunately, in about 2 to 3 percent of the population, the immune system not only fire back on the bacteria, unfortunately, it attacks our own tissue as well. Immune system attacks our own tissue as well. For example, this may attack the cardiac tissue. It may attack joints, especially synovial joints. This may attack skin. It may attack subcutaneous tissue and it may attack central nervous system. Right. So unfortunately, in 2 to 3 percent of uh, people who suffer with such type of pharyngitis, right, this immune activation may produce lions in the skin, lions in subcutaneous tissue, lions in the central nervous system, lions in the heart and lions in the synovial joint. So what really happens? In 2 to 3 percent of these patients, they develop carditis, they develop polyarthritis, they develop special type of lions in the skin, they develop sub, uh, those lions are called erythema marginatum and some of these patients also develop subcutaneous nodules and very unfortunate people also develop central nervous system problem, especially uh, motor disturbances and chorea. So, but what is happening there, right? We can say bacteria has activated the immune system and majority of the people immune system will react in a very appropriate way and eliminate the bacteria only. But in some vulnerable patient who are genetically vulnerable, 2 to 3 percent of the population, this immune system which is triggered by the immune response, which is triggered by that streptococcal pharyngitis, that immune response inappropriately cross react with our own tissues. Why it happens so? Because some of the bacterial antigens are very similar with our own antigens. Some of the bacterial antigens are very, very similar with our own antigens. For example, in the bacterial, suppose here is the bacteria, right? And this is the membrane of the bacteria, cell membrane of the bacteria and here is cell wall of the bacteria. This is gram positive bacteria. Now, Listen, they say some of the antigens which are present in the capsule, carbohydrate antigens, they are very, very structurally similar with cardiac valves. So when immune system react against these, immune system is reacting against these cell wall components, it may cross react with the cardiac glycoproteins. And some other people claim that some of the proteins which are present in the cell membrane of the bacteria, especially protein M. The protein M in the bacterial cell membrane is very, very similar with some of the proteins in our own tissue like myocardial cells, sarcolemma of the myocardial cell. So they say that there is a great deal of antigenic mimicry. The antigens of bacteria are very, very similar with some of the human antigens. If bacterial antigens are very similar with the human antigens, then it is possible that the immune response which is supposed to destroy the bacteria may unfortunately cross-react with our own antigens. Is that right? 
but this unfortunate thing happen only in genetically predisposed people to 3 percent of the population 98 or 97 percent of the people who suffer with this type of bacterial infection in the pharynx their immune response is so specific that when this bacterial infection is there immune response will fire on the bacteria but it will not cross fire with our own tissue now listen so when streptococcal infection of course with Lansfield group A beta hemolyticus rheumatogenic strain they activate the immune system I told you in 2 to 3 percent of the population immune system cross react with the human tissue and that will produce inflammation of multiple tissues for example multi system multi system inflammation inflammation of cardiac tissue inflammation of synovial membranes in the joints right inflammation of the skin inflammation of subcutaneous node area inflammation of the central nervous system so what we can say that but remember one thing that once the bacterial infection start it takes two to four weeks to develop full fledged immune response once you have streptococcal infections it take two three four week or five week to develop a very good immune response now listen this problem to these tissue is immune mediated so if you get bacteria today you cannot get this problem tomorrow why because the immune system takes time to build up that is why when you get this special type of streptococcal pharyngitis it will take two to four weeks that post streptococcal pharyngitis there will be multi-systemic multi-systemic immune mediated non-separative inflammation why I say non-separative because there will be inflammation of cardiac tissue there will be inflammation of the joints but there will be no pus there will be no pus so I call because there is no pus in inflammation so I call it non-separative inflammation so what is happening that after the streptococcal pharyngitis right with an interval of two to four weeks patient develop multi-systemic immune mediated inflammation and it's acute inflammation and because inflammation is severe so a lot of pyrogens are produced many inflammatory cells are attacking the human tissue so a lot of cytokines are produced and these cytokines go to hypothalamus and precipitate fever so we say that patient has developed fever but in this fever right because in many patients joints were very much inflamed so they were called rheumatic fever does that right so what is rheumatic fever rheumatic fever is multi system immune mediated acute inflammation which is non separative inflammation which occurs which occurs or which develops two to four weeks after after pharyngitis by beta hemolyticus streptococci lions field group A with rheumatogenic strain right and the system which are specially vulnerable to this type of fever are cardiac system joints skin subcutaneous nodule and central nervous system so let me now define what is rheumatic fever but before really I define I would like to give you a sketch that let's suppose this is time scale in the time scale now this person these two to three percent of the population whenever they get that bacteria they have an increased tendency to develop rheumatic fever so these people you can say that whenever they get what problem streptococcal sore throat look in the time scale they get streptococcal sore throat within two to three weeks they will develop what thing rheumatic fever and whenever they develop streptococcal sore throat whenever they develop streptococcal sore throat they have a tendency that their streptococcal sore throat will be followed by which which problem rheumatic fever what is it rheumatic fever so now we, have, we develop a relationship between the special type of streptococcal infection and the rheumatic fever that what's wrong with the people remember there's a very special type of streptococcus whenever it produces pharyngitis in about two to three percent of the unfortunate population 
they have a tendency that when they develop the immune response against the bacteria, unfortunately immune response which is the we should be ideally against the bacteria cross react with our own tissue because some of our antigens are similar with bacterial antigens right and due to that reason immune system cross react and when immune system cross react and damages our own multiple tissues naturally multi systemic inflammatory condition occur which is immune mediated non separative right and with that fever is developed and we call it rheumatic fever.